I strongly feel that we are in the same situation today because of our firm testimony of the church according to God's revelation. A great deal of criticism and opposition have come out against us. Some even say that we are a cult. How could we be a cult? Honestly speaking, we believe the Holy Word in a pure way more than others do in this age. We are not boasting. But simply speaking, the truth. At least we are the same as others in believing the Holy Word, but not in a leavened way. Do our dear critics have the assurance in their conscience that we are heretical? Every Christian has a conscience. They should listen to their conscience before the Lord. Listen to your conscience, please, and to what the Lord tells you in your conscience. I have asked the brothers here in the United States to tell me how a little man from China, coming to the leading nation on earth, can receive so much attention. Why do they pay attention to me? They should simply forget about this little man. Now, from the west coast to the east, there are rumors that Venus Lee is heretical. Even in 1964, when I went to Texas, some Christians tilted me like spies. Following me from one place to another, they took down what I said in my messages, and after twisting it, put it into print. So for ten years, this small man has received much undeserved attention. Why do so many people pay attention to such a small man? Because this small man has brought something to this country that disturbs the enemy and threatens the kingdom of darkness. This testimony touches the territory of darkness. I am a small man. However, from the depths of my being and from my pure conscience, I have the full assurance that this ministry is telling God's people what is today's revelation. America is a country of Christianity. There is no need for a man from the Orient to come here and speak to people about Christianity. But there is a need for the dear saints in this country to see today's revelation of God. What does the Lord want to do today? He does not simply want to save people, cause them to please God, teach them to call on the name of the Lord, and enable them to live, begat, and walk with God. What He wants to do today is more than all this. He needs the churches to be raised up. His intention is to attract his lovers and seekers, and gather them together to practice the proper church life as a testimony against the enemy's kingdom of darkness, and as a preparation for his return. This is his intention today. We all need to see this and build this ark to be today's Noah, that we may terminate this generation and usher in the new age of the kingdom. Concerning God's desire, God not only has an intention but also a desire. God does intend to do something, and He is also hungry and thirsty for this. God desires to have the church life. In nineteen thirty-three, a good pastor came to me. He did not call me Brother Lee. He addressed me as Mister Lee. He said, Mister Lee. If you would not have the church and just minister the word, we all would invite you to speak in our churches. We will make the arrangement for you to rotate the year round from church to church. If you would close the door of your meeting place, disband the people who meet with you, and simply preach the word, we would all open our doors to you. I say thank you. I have my burden. I have enough to do. When I went to Taiwan, a missionary came to see me. Firstly, he praised me very much, saying, "Brother Lee, how we thank God that He has used you, and how we thank Him that He has raised up such a wonderful work on the island of Taiwan." While he was praising me, I knew what he was going to say next. He continued by saying something about the church in a dissenting way. Some of the missionaries in the Far East consider our church practice as a dead fly in the ointment. Some say to me, "If you don't talk any more about the church, you will be welcomed by all Christians." I said, "Sorry, it does not depend on me. The Lord has burdened me so." I used to say to them, "We are grateful to you, brothers, who came from countries afar off for the gospel, especially to those pioneers, 
a century ago who came to China after a six-month voyage. We appreciate the fact that you have given up your country, your family, your home, and everything to come here to preach the gospel. But our burden is not only for the gospel, but also for the church. God needs the church. Gospel preaching should be for the church. We also preach the gospel, as you know, but our goal in doing so is the building up of the church. Sorry to say, it seems to us that you do not care for this goal that God has shown us. I was invited to visit London and Denmark in 1958. I cannot tell you how warm a welcome they extended to me in both places. Eventually, most of the leading ones were displeased with me over the matter of the church. I am for the church. Some friendships in the Lord which had been deep were severed just because of this. Because of my standing for the church life according to what the Lord has shown us, a number of the saints whom I know have deserted me. I have not the slightest doubt that time will tell that the church life is what God desires to have today. I came to Los Angeles in 1962 to stay with the brothers for the Lord's recovery. At that time, I told that small group of brothers to wait for five or ten years and they would see something. Today, I say the same thing. I hope the Lord will come back soon. In case that he delays, I ask you to wait for another ten years and see what will happen. The Lord is going to take this country and the other leading countries for his recovery.